Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Ariel with Ariel Paints and today I'm going to show you guys the Arteza UV palette which is amazing. I created this really cool skull with it and I want to thank my friends at Arteza. They actually saw my last black light video using regular paint and asked if they could send me their UV palette and I said yes please. So thank you Arteza for sending that to me and allowing me to show it to my subscribers. If you'd like to see how I got this look, here it is without the black light on as well. It looks really, really cool and kind of abstract. So if you'd like to see how I got this look and what the UV Arteza palette is all about, then please stay tuned. I will walk you through it. And be sure to check the description box below for a link to this palette and a coupon code for 10% off for my viewers. I'm starting with the light gray from my 16 color Arteza palette because it was just really easy to grab and I like that it comes out of the pot, out of the main palette. So I'm just holding it and sketching out where I want the dark areas of the skull to end up. Just as a guideline, this is also going to help me fill in with all the UV colors. So I think it's an important step to do. I'm also using just the two brushes from the UV palette. There's a thinner, almost like a number two and then a small quarter inch flat. Look at those colors. Isn't that fun? I'm so excited. So I just used those two brushes for this whole look and it worked out really well. So you can see I've switched to the quarter inch flat and I'm just going to start, I decided to start with a pink from the palette and I'm just going to start doing abstract lines and I'm just switching from thin to thick, pulling and moving that brush around. You can see I kind of skate on the tip of the brush and then I push it flat as well to get a variance of lines. Like right now, while I've switched to kind of the white in the palette that really shines as a light blue. Um, but you can see I can fill in larger areas, but then when I want a thin line, I can just go on the corner of the brush. So it's great for a look like this. And I'm just going to do kind of sweeps down at the bottom of my chin. You can see and you'll see me check multiple times while doing this just to make sure the values of what I'm doing are differentiated enough between one color and the other. And I'm singing too, so sorry about that. I don't know what song I had playing while I was doing this, but there was a couple times through this video that I just start singing. So <laughs> luckily I turned the sound off for you so you don't have to listen to me sing. Um, so one thing that is important with UV paint and with all paint, especially something that's going to change later, is to pay attention to the value of the paint when it is not under black light and then when it is. So if I was gonna wear this out to a rave or a black light party, I want it to look good when I don't have a black light on my face, but then when the black light is on, there I go again, <laughs> I want it to look particularly good. So you'll see that I shut the lights off and I point the black light at my face, but I also, before I started, I analyzed the palette. So I turned all the lights off and I looked at the palette under black light and I took note of the value shifts. So I'm making sure that, you know, the lighter blue, if that value is that much different than the purple, then I put those next to each other. And that way I get a really, really good contrast in the end. So hopefully that makes sense. And besides that, just think of your face as an abstract painting. I am pressing and putting kind of the, a dot of the brush stroke down. I'm wiggling it through the design. I mean, there is no right or wrong to this at all. But can you see that, how when I shine the light, there's a there's value changes between that UV, even though it all glows, that's what you want to be conscious of. It's starting to look really cool, and I'm really excited. So I'm also going to add a few drips, and what you want to do to do this is just get your paint super, super watery and let it drip down your face. And I used to do this all the time when I was an abstract painter. It was one of my favorite things to do was to drip paint down a canvas. And I really a lot of times kind of drag it down and help it because I am impatient and I don't like to wait. 
I also pulled inspiration for this look from another YouTuber's channel. I believe it's um, Insomniac's Dream is how you pronounce it. She spells it a little different, so hopefully I'm not completely butchering that. Um, hers is different. It's a little bit more drippy um, and even more, I would say, editorial than mine. And I'm not looking at hers while I do this, but I definitely watched it and had it in the back of my head. So thank you for the inspiration. Um, I am looking at a, a photo of a skull and really going, oh, you can see this is how drippy you want it. See that? Get it nice and drippy and then scoop it up. Um, and you can watch hers if you want it to be a really, really drippy one because hers, especially in the end, really looks like it's melting off of the face. Mine doesn't so much. So like I said, took a little inspiration from it, but tried to twist it and make it my own. So now I'm going to start adding the black. I'm using just the Arteza black from the 16 color palette um, that I have and the same quarter inch brush. And this is when it really starts to kind of all come together. This kind of a look is hardest to do in the very beginning because you think you're just making a total mess of yourself. But as you keep going, and I'm gonna go ahead and just use a sponge to fill in my eyes because I got really bored using the brush and I have no patience, which you guys know. Um, so anyways, in the beginning, it's hard because you feel like you're just making a total mess of your face, but just keep going and the look will start to come together, especially when you add the black. I was talking about value. Here's where the value of something like black makes such a huge difference with these pastels and neons. So I'm going back to where I can see my little gray lines and adding in those kind of forehead skull marks and then I already have some black on that petal sponge so I'm just going to pat it out to create a shadow there which I think really helps this look when the UV light is not on and it adds kind of a grungy depth when it is on so just pat that out and then go ahead and continue to add some lines. I'm going to fill in the bottom jaw line as well with black. And then later I will drag it down my neck a little bit as well. And you can see I filled in the temples too and I'm just pulling it in my hairline. Now if I was doing this look and going out on the town, I would fill in my ears with black and then I would pull it all the way down my neck and do more of a solid black and then have a cuter outfit on than a sweatshirt probably. So absolutely do that if you're going out on the town. I was going to wash this off after this video and really didn't want to take a shower. So I did not do that. So you can see I'm just filling in the bottom now. And then I did like that YouTube video I mentioned. She had the bottom of the jaw all black. And I thought that was really, really interesting. So I wanted to see what that would look like. And I do like it. I think it makes for a really kind of dramatic, creepy look. Making sure I don't have black all over my teeth, which sometimes happens when, when I paint my lips black. And the Arteza black is a nice, rich black. It's... It, covered really really well all right so I'm going to do a black light check which I recommend you guys doing when you're doing a look like this because that way you don't have to correct as much in the end if you keep checking to make sure you're on point your value is good and everything and now I'm going to take the lighter what looks like white but glows more of a as a light blue and I'm going to add teeth and you can see this brush that comes with the palette is perfect for teeth. This is like the easiest uh, way I've done teeth in a really, really long time. And I kept them kind of small and simple, but the size is just absolutely perfect. You also want to be a little careful going over that black. Don't work it too much because you're going to reactivate the black underneath and you might want to do a few layers to get it nice and bright so that those teeth shine under the UV. So now I'm going back to the number two round brush from this Arteza palette and I'm just going to pull those black lines up 
going up to my nose, which gives you kind of that creepy skull look. And this is really, really easy to do. And I'm just going to define the bottom of the teeth as well. And then I decided to add some cracks because I felt like that black was adding a lot to the design, but I wanted it to be a little creepier. So I add some cracks through the design and then I'm just doing some outlining and some definition lines around the eyes as well. So you can see I'm layering them up a little bit, do your cracks in um, larger and smaller lines so that they look a little bit more authentic. And I'm dancing now to whatever song I have on. <laughs> so I decided I wanted the bottom jawline to be kind of creepy, almost like I was being kind of like eaten by the black in a way. So I started just pulling these wiggly lines through that UV color I placed down on the jawline and connecting some of those segments that I had and I just really liked the way it looked kind of disjointed but pulled together. So I just went with it and I, I think it looked really cool. At this point in the design you could be completely done or you could add more detail, more shading. I am pulling some more of those lines down underneath my eyes. Um, and then I do my neck, as I mentioned to you guys, and you can absolutely add glitter at this point. I mean, make it your own, have fun with it. I had so much fun doing this and I am so excited to have a UV palette. Love this palette. Love that it's, um, small and it's all in one because I don't really need separate UV paint in my kit because it's not something I'm going to use all the time. But now if somebody wants me to paint at a black light party, I can bring my black light kit and then my neon paints and essentially have a full kit. So, so excited. Thank you, Arteza. I am thrilled by this. So I went ahead and pulled my hair down, which already is making this look way, way cooler. And I actually love it without the black light on too. I was really nervous about how that would look. So let me go turn the lights off, wait a second, and we will see what this really looks like with the black light. How cool is that? I love it. I'm so sad that I had to just wash this off and I couldn't go to like a rave or something. Somebody needs to be inviting me to like black light parties. <laughs> so I couldn't help but dance around a little bit. I had so much fun creating this look. I cannot thank Arteza enough for sending me this. I am incredibly excited about it. If you would like to get this palette, please check the link below and there will be a coupon code available for a month after this video posts. So I'm posting this in October of 2018. So please keep that in mind. Use the code if you are watching this within that time frame. If not, the link will still be active so you can still get this palette. If you do purchase this palette through my link, I want you all to know that I am an Arteza affiliate, which means I get a very small commission from purchases directly from my channel. So if you do that, I want to thank you for supporting me. Supporting me through those links allows me to continue to create free content for you guys, so I appreciate it greatly. As always, please like, subscribe, hit the bell so you get notifications when I post new videos. I really hope you guys like this look. Please comment down below and let me know what you think, and I will see you guys in my next video.